you probably already know that in order to run containers, we need to build container images. And the most commonly way to define how images are built is Dockerfile. What you might not know is that we can use Dockerfile for much more than building container images. We can use it to build our binaries. We can use it to lint software. We can use it to run static analysis. We can use it to run tests and so on and so forth. There are many other things we can do as part of the process of building container images beyond building the images themselves. And on top of that, Dockerfile is not used only to describe how to build images with Docker, but it can be used with many other tools. It could be Kaneko and quite a few others. Today we are going to explore multi-stage builds, how we can create different stages so that we can streamline the process that ends with building an image but starts from the very beginning. Let's start with a very simple Docker file and then see what the problems we are going to face with using something that simple and progress from there until we get to something that is Beautiful. I'm already inside the Git repository that has all the definitions that I need, that you need if you want to follow along. And if you don't want to follow along, the gist with all the instructions is in the description of this video. So let's take a look at a very simple Docker file, which is called Dockerfile-simple, so that you do not get confused. This Docker file is based on the Alpine image, which is very small. It's not the smallest one. You might want to go with Scratch, but for this exercise, this should be good enough. We are exposing port 8080. We are going to execute the command demo when the container based on this image is created. We are going to copy the binary demo from my local file system into USR local bin directory inside of that container image and make it executable. The order here is important because the things that are less likely to change are higher on the list and those that are more likely to change, like copying the binary, that is going to change with every build so that the process of building container images can cache you know, the top layers and then only process those at the bottom. Anyways, let's see whether we can build the image based on this Docker file. So it would be docker image build dash dash tag demo. So we are going to call that image demo. And since this specification is not in Docker file, but in Docker file dash simple, we need to specify the path to the Docker file, which is Docker file dash simple. And we need to specify the context. Where are the files located? And I'm going to say dot because that means current directory, wherever I am right now. It pulled the image and then it tried to copy demo from my local file system into that image and it failed. And it's normal that it failed because I never built the binary. I never built the binary of this application. Now I could tell you, hey, how about you build the binary, install Go compiler, execute this command and that command, build the binary and then run this command again, try to build container image again and then it would work. But that is silly. That is a waste of time since we can build binaries and we can do much more inside of Docker files. So there should be no need for anybody to have instructions like do this, do that, do this, do that. And once you're finished doing all those things, then you can build the image. No, we should be able to have a self-sustained system that everything required for building an image, including in this case, this binary should be within the same definition and everything should be done with a single command. So let's try again. Let's take a look at a slightly different Docker file, which is Docker file dash fact. This time the base image is going because we need Go to compile the binary for this application. Now, don't worry if you're not proficient with Go, the logic is the same whether you're using JavaScript, Java, Python, this or that, right? You select the base image that contains the tools that you need, and in this case, that base image is Golang. The next two instructions are the same as before. We are going to expose port 8080 if this image ever becomes a container. We're going to make demo being the command that executes when container starts. This is the same as before. And what comes next is new. I'm adding the whole current directory inside of the image inside the directory src. Then I'm making that directory the work directory so that everything else that happens from now on is inside of the directory and then I'm running unit tests because it doesn't make sense for me to build a binary if it doesn't work. So first test it, 
then build the binary, and potentially later on we might go into functional testing, integration testing, and other types of testing that require runtime. But for now, I'm focused on unit testing, starting testing, let's say. And if tests are successful, then we are building the binary here and putting that binary inside of USR local bin demo so that it can be executed, and we are changing the permissions so that that binary is executable. Now, if this works, and we are yet to see whether it works and whether it works well, this should provide everything I need to build the image. I have all the tools I need inside of that container image. I am copying the source code. I am running unit tests. I'm building the binary. I'm making the binary executable, and so on and so forth. And the final result should be the image with my application. So let's try it out. Let's see whether it really works. So the command should be similar like before, docker image build, and we want to tag it as, let's say, demo, and then file uh, that contains instructions how to build the image is docker file fat, and we need dot at the end, meaning the current directory is the context. And let's see, now it is pulling uh, the Golang image, it should take only a couple of more moments. Actually, that image seems to be big. I'm not sure. Maybe that's a problem. We're going to figure it out later whether that's an issue or no. And let's see. The process failed in the middle because the tests were not correct. I intentionally make the test fail just to show you that actually testing can be part of uh, building an image and it makes everything easy because it's a single command. Now I need to fake that I am uh, going to fix the bug by changing the source code of the application. Um, I'm going to open main go and just change the here it says fancy demo is false. I'm going to change it to true. I just made intentional uh, problems so that you see what happens when tests fail. The process fails at that point as well. So that's a good thing, right? Uh, if tests were not successful, the image is not built and there is not much for us to do but to fix the problem. So I'm simulating that I fixed the problem and now I should be able to run the same command again and uh, if the bug is really fixed, it should continue after running the tests and build the image and build binary actually first and then the image and so on and so forth. And that was successful. Now there is one thing that you need to understand. The image is supposed to have a single binary, in this case based on Go, I mean Go compiled binary, that should be relatively small and lightweight because there's not much more to this demo image, it's just a single binary or that's what it should be. So let's take a look at the images we have so docker image list and demo is indeed here here's the demo right we can see it and we can see all the information it was created a minute ago but look at this the size it is 875 megabytes for an application that is hello world it is a hello world compiled to an executable and that should be a few megabytes the reason that this is so big that it is almost one gigabyte is because we used Golang as the base image. So this image with that binary contains whole Go compiler and everything else that comes with Go. I do not need that in production. It also contains the whole source code of the application which was copied so that the binary could be built. Those things are not necessary. They're necessary for the process to run. They're necessary for building, uh, in this case, binary and few other things. But it is not necessary to have all those things as the end result of the image that should potentially run in production. So the process works well. It executes uh, tests, it builds the binary and does everything else that needs to be done, but the end result is too big. Let's try to make it smaller, much smaller. And for that, we are going to take a look at yet another Docker file. This will be an improvement of what we did so far. Now, this Docker file is almost the same as the one we used before. The base image is Golang. We are copying the source code. We are making SRC the work here. We are running tests and we are building the binary. But what is new is another from instruction. And what is very important to understand is that final image will be based on the instructions starting from the last from instruction. So only this will be the final image. Everything defined before the last from statement will be discarded. This will be removed when the process ends. This is temporary. On the other hand, this is final. This will be our final image. 
And inside of that final image, we are doing only the things that are necessary. And that is to tell whichever orchestrator we are using to expose port 8080, make demo be the command. And here comes the trick. Here comes the important part. It says, hey, copy something from build. And build is the name here of the previous stage. So copy this file into this directory inside of this image. We are basically creating two images. The first one is temporary, the second one is permanent, and the second one will use something from the first one. It will copy the demo binary. It will discard everything else from the first image except the binary itself, the application itself, which will be copied into the final image. And at the end, we are making that binary executable. So this is more or less the same as the previous definition, except that we split it into multiple stages. So let's take a look at the final result of this one. And the final result will be docker image build. And we are going to give it a tag demo. We do not need to specify the file because docker file is the default. It is assumed by default, but we do need context, which is dot. And now it is doing whatever it needs to do. And let's take a look at the images, docker image list. Now the demo image that was almost one gigabyte before is now 17 megabytes. This is order of magnitude smaller than what we had before. What matters is that the final image is small, while at the same time we have everything we need up to the point of building image itself defined inside of a single file and executed with a single command. A single docker image build command gives us the ability to execute all the steps we need up to the point that creates the image itself. Now I should be able to run docker image build as many times as I want during the development of this application. I could combine it with scaffold. If you haven't seen scaffold, uh, the link is somewhere there so that it is doing executing that process continuously. And we can put this command in our CI CD pipelines and uh, just have it as part of our release process or whatever we're doing. Docker multi stage builds are one of my favorite features. I love it. I use it all the time. They've been around for years now. Some of you might be familiar with it, some of you not. I think that it is still highly underutilized, especially given how awesome it is. It simplifies local development. I can just execute Docker image build every time I need to validate that whatever I'm working on is correct. It will build the binary, run the test, package, lint, do whatever it needs to be done and end up with an image that I can deploy somewhere wherever I want that to be deployed. I can execute that same command using exactly the same manifests in my CI CD pipelines. And I do not need always to use Docker. I use Docker on my local machine and then I would execute the same process using Kaniko inside of my Kubernetes cluster. The definition is the same, the process is the same, but the tool is not. The tool can be whatever fits specific scenario. So if you're already using multi-stage builds, you probably didn't reach this far in a video. If, if you're not using multi-stage builds, you have to use them. They're absolutely awesome.